I should like to use that moment to dance with my beautiful wife. Please, enjoy yourselves. Daddy? Everyone wake up. The Viscount and Viscountess are being cute and married. Hi, I'm Lady Genevieve, and on my channel, I like to talk about entertainment media. Let me just say that the process of making this video was a whole lot of a whole lot. I wasn't even home when this clip dropped, or at least I wasn't home when I saw about it. I saw it about an hour after it was published, and by then I was out. I really needed the reminder though to maybe switch my Twitter notifications on for the Bridgerton account because I need to know if there are new Bridgerton things being released and if I need to make a new video about them. Also, the rescue cats, they're being very chaotic right now, so even when I was home, I was distracted. You know what? Let's just cut to the cat cutaway so we can get into all things Bridgerton. Yuki and her babies are no longer being kept in their playpen because Yuki is an escape artist and ripped the playpen open twice now, so Kimiko is the one who's being kept in my room, which is also her room, but it's only a couple more weeks, and then everyone else will be getting fixed and adopted out, after which Kimiko will be back to being in charge charge of everything. New Bridgerton clip. Not only that, new Cantony clip. Our parents are having a baby too. They had sex. That's what a whole lot of folks have been waiting for. It wouldn't be a Cantony clip without some quality hand stuff. I know, it's intimidating to fall for a girl with a strong pelvic floor. A while back I did a poll on my community tab, which is proof that you should subscribe to my channel so that you will know whenever I'm posting polls and you can vote in them. We're keeping things interactive over here. I asked my audience where they thought that season three would be ranked in comparisons to how they ranked seasons one and two, and the majority of people said either first or second. Combining that with the feedback back in the comments of not only that poll, but just comments across my other coverage of Bridgerton season three, or perhaps just Bridgerton in general. The consensus that I'm getting is that I have a lot of people who have Cantony as their favorite, and I have a lot of people who have Pollen as their favorite. Now, I don't bring this up to try to stir up any hornet's nests and have people bickering about which ship they consider to be first place. If anything, all of you should focus instead on the fact that you're more alike than you might think. A whole lot of you seem to be ranking Simon and Daphne as third place without even having seen a full trailer of season three. Clearly, we are all operating on similar frequencies here, and I think that's a good thing, actually. Cantonese and Pollens are not each other's enemy here. And world peace. The real enemy, forever and always, is the Featherington family subplot. And to the people who reminded me why I don't want to use Twitter for recreational purposes, yeah, I'm speaking to those of you who only want to see new pollen in promo. You see Penelope in this clip, and furthermore, Bridgerton is an ensemble show and has always been an ensemble show ever since season one. You don't see me lashing out that Benedict is not being included in these promotional clips, now do you? No, you're not, because I take the clips and the images that are being released and look at whatever they are in their own own right. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about Penelope's appearance in this clip just yet because I want to go through the things that I saw in sequential order, but feel free to sound off in the comments in case there are other details that you might have noticed that I missed because admittedly I am being distracted by cats, so please be kind if my eye for detail is not dialed up to an 11 out of 10 like it usually is, but please no book spoilers in the comments. I have not read book four, nor have I read any of the books that are not one and two. Brother? I should like a moment alone. Of course. First up, we have Francesca asking Antony for a moment alone. First of all, I'm glad we finally get more of a look at Francesca because with my determination to not look prematurely at the books, unless I have extenuating circumstances that incentivize me to do so, I don't feel like I know Francesca at all. This distance I have with the character is even bigger because she's just been recast. So even the people who have read the books are still going to be introduced to this version of Francesca for the first time. Now I'm going to speculate and talk about some details. So if what I'm saying is really obvious to book readers, la 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 la, please don't tell me. She's upset about something. You can tell in her tone of voice, her body language, and her facial expressions, but also because Violet asks Antony about Francesca. Oh dear, is Francesca quite well? She simply needed a moment. And what I find interesting though is that it seems like Antony knows the tea, but Violet doesn't. When Francesca asks for a moment alone, Antony just says, 
of course. But he doesn't say anything along the lines of why, what's wrong. Now it could be that married Antony is more of a chill older brother as opposed to a helicopter older brother, the way that he was with Daphne in season one. But when I have no other information to go off of, if I have to guess, for now, I would lean more towards the idea that whatever it is that Francesca is upset about, Antony is aware of the reason. If it was a big deal, he might have told Violet when she asked. Maybe he would have pulled her aside or just leaned in really closely to speak quietly about whatever the situation is. But if it's something he knows about and it's not a life and death emergency, he could just tell Violet not to worry about it. But I do like the idea of Francesca struggling, not because I have anything against her, but you want there to be some sort of obstacle or challenge happening for a character that is fundamental for the storytelling. If she's riding the struggle bus, she's going to have some sort of arc or growth or realization. And along the way, we will get to learn more about her. We will get to presumably root for her since her last name is Bridgerton and not Featherington. <laughs> Penelope stands, don't come for me. I wasn't coming for Penelope specifically. It is always Portia for whom the strays are intended and you will not make me feel bad about that. I've had enough of her. Dame paciencia. But you see how much I had to say from just a few seconds of Francesca? That's why the three pollen stands or however many it was that I saw tweets from complaining that there was a Cantony clip being released need to simmer down. Some of us are not coming for your faves. Some of us are just nosy and want to know what's going on with everyone that is a main character in the Bridgerton universe, except for Portia or Charlotte. But don't get me started on that one or else I will turn into an Irish football fan. So now if you'll excuse me, they're playing my jam. So Francesca is sitting in the background, out of focus, when Antony walks over to be with his wife. God, that feels good to say. That feels so nice to call her that. Antony's wife, Katani Sharma Bridgerton, because in my mind, she has both names and so will their babies. I think it's unintentionally funny that Francesca is sitting down, pouting inside where everyone is and can still see her. It's giving main character of a music video. It's giving, yes, I'm sad, but you're still going to watch me be sad in good lighting while Jojo sings a banger of a pop ballad. Why wouldn't she go sneak outside to be sad or upset in private? Because she's extra and I love that for her. Why are you so dramatic? Why? Why, 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 why? That might not even remotely be what her actual personality is, but this is why it's fun to not read the book beforehand. I get to play a guessing game to pass the time while I have to survive under capitalism and have my emails be ignored by Hollywood publicists. I am invisible and I am wet. Wife guy Anthony Bridgerton refuses to have even a drop of chill when it comes to his wife, and I love that for him, and I love it even more for her. I love that he's obsessed, down bad, adoring, and so on and so forth. That's why when I look at the analytics for my Bridgerton videos, it will usually say something like over 90% female in the gender section. 2024 is the year of me doing a hard pivot to focusing on fiction made for the girls. Capital T, capital G, the girls. That doesn't actually mean female, by the way, as a random example. When I did the Anyone But You press junket and Glenn Powell complimented my Josie and the Pussycats poster, in that moment, he was one of the girls. Uh, I also saw you have Josie and the Pussycats back there, which I fully support. You Iconic. Know, some, some real bangers in that movie as well. Being one of the girls isn't actually about your gender, it's about your vibes. We don't discriminate based on gender. And I should like to use that moment to dance with my beautiful wife. Please enjoy yourself. Anthony wants to dance with his beautiful wife and I had to keep repeating this part of the clip and turn the subtitles on because I could not for the life of me catch what it was that Kate was saying. Please enjoy yourself. <laughs> 
She says the word interference, which to me insinuates that Anthony is interrupting something of note in the conversation happening between Violet and Kate. Bit intriguing, though I don't have the slightest guess as to what they would be talking about. Maybe it's the predictable but still potentially funny how long until you give me another grandbaby to spoil conversation. We're talking gimples. Not in this house. When Kate joins Antony on the dance floor, she seems to give a sort of wistful look at them. Maybe it's just coverage being edited in for the flow of the edit, but maybe they want to say something in particular. Maybe it's a sort of hint that Violet is thinking about Edmund and the higher ups need to listen to my audience who voted significantly in favor of wanting to see a Violet Edmund prequel. I mean... I would watch that. Didn't I already say that I'm nosy about a lot of the characters in this universe? Give me the backstory. Let me know about the great epic love story that birthed this giant horde of unhinged Bridgerton children that we are now following and watching falling in love. Or maybe Violet's just making that face because she's thinking about whatever it was that she and Kate were talking about. All of that remains to be seen by everyone, including me, since some publicists have not given me screeners yet, so I have been unable to start working on my coverage. Reproduction. Can we please talk about Kate's dress though? I'm obsessed with it and I don't even wear dresses. I couldn't tell you the last time that I wore one. I love your dress. It's so tight. If you've been around on my channel for a while, you will have heard me talk about Kate's season three attire. That was in my first video of 2024. And that was what kickstarted the momentum we currently have going on over here. Me and the really fun people who keep coming back to chat about the show and romantic fiction in general. The problem is I hate reading. I get bored. So Kate was wearing bright orange, which is very much a Kate color and more broadly speaking, a Sharma color. And she was also wearing blue, which is more of a Bridgerton family color. Well, it seems we have a similar color fusion going on this time around. From the front, we can see there's blue in the dress, but it's sort of intermingled with shades of brown, almost like a nude illusion where it matches her skin tone really well. It's very pretty, but then once she starts dancing and you get more of a look at the shawl that's wrapped around her, that has more of a mix of orange with blue as opposed to this warm brown tone on the dress itself. I really think these costume people fully snapped. I'm by no means a fashion expert. I'm not going to be able to get overly specific with the jargon, but it's impossible to use a half loop top stitching on low viscosity rayon. It would snag the fabric. I love this approach to the color story, the detailing in the fabric, that it has this almost shimmery iridescent quality. It's just really nice to look at, especially when she's in motion. So the fabric has an easier time catching the light. Right. <laughs> But now let's talk about Penelope because we do get a glimpse of her during this dance, but she is not dancing. She's standing off to the side in the same room as everyone else that we see in this clip. Now the first time I watched this new sneak peek clip, my initial response to seeing Penelope was, ooh, I don't think I've ever seen her wear this deep vibrant emerald shade before, but I really like it. Now, thankfully for all of us, I don't really do reaction videos for new Bridgerton promo. I sit and watch and rewatch things so that I can make sure I've looked at things closely and then I have a better sense of what I would like to hone in on to discuss in a video. So once I watched the clip back a few more times, I had the realization that I'm sure most or all of you did as well, which is that this is the same look as Penelope in that previous promotional clip, the one where she dragged Colin, the great dragoning of Mr. No Thoughts Head Empty that was long overdue. It just never occurred to me that you of all people could be so cruel. I'm just scoot on over and let you whack him. Get him again. Get him for me. She's got the same hairstyle where it's long and down and swept to one side, a bit of an over the shoulder look, but I didn't at first glance realize that it was the same look because most of the conversation that we watched between Colin and Penelope had shots that were significantly closer up and I couldn't get a good prolonged look at what Penelope was wearing. You don't see much of it until that very brief shot at the end when she's walking away in a huff back into her carriage because she's had it. I've had it. And I'm so, you know what I have? It. It. But this shot of Penelope inside at the ball. It's more of a medium shot so I and everyone else can get more of a view of her outfit and she has significantly better lighting on her than she did outside. So that brings us back to my point which is that I really like how she looks in Emerald. Last weekend we did a watch party that was free for everyone to join, not only my paid patrons, it was for the free tier as well and it was of Lindsay Lohan's Irish Wish and I said in the chat that I really like how Lindsay Lohan looks in green. Now Lindsay is a redhead and green is a contrasting color to red so as long as 
things. You don't pick weird shades. Those colors complement each other really well. And I think the same can be said for Penelope. Penelope O. Featherington is a redhead and not just a redhead, a redhead with an upgraded wig because she's now the female lead of season three. So you've got a really pretty, rich, vibrant red shade and the emerald works really well with that. Now that doesn't mean I only want to see her wearing emerald. She can wear a pale green as well. That can complement the blushy pink of her cheeks with her red hair, blushing like she was when she and Colin were making awkward mouth noises. Mm. Um. Um. <coughs> But Penelope's body language in this clip is indicating that she feels awkward and uncomfortable. This is interesting because if you remember when I talked about that other promotional clip, I was asking the question, I was thinking out loud about how Penelope had called herself the laughing stock of the ton. And I didn't know if that was just her feeling some type of way in her mind or if she was actually being treated quite poorly by the other members of the ton. I am the laughing stock of the ton even when I change my entire wardrobe. This Cantony clip is just a short clip, so we don't know what else is happening happening at this ball. Maybe she has some disastrous interactions with unmarried men, but we don't see that happen in these 30 seconds. From what we can see in this clip, no one is looking at Penelope and pointing and laughing, and why would they? She looks great. But I do like that we get this small glimpse of Penelope in this Cantony clip because it feels like finding the correct piece of a puzzle and you feel that satisfaction of knowing exactly where to put it. It doesn't matter that she doesn't have dialogue in this clip. I still feel like I'm getting a preview of her story. Now, if it had just been this clip with nothing else to go off of, I would have had significantly less to say. But because because we already got that other Pauline clip where she dragged him. This feels like an extension of that. Also, another detail of this clip as it pertains to Penelope, she's not dancing, she needs a partner. Do you think Lord Debling will dance with her? I hope he does. Not because I have any strong opinions about him yet, but just because I want Colin to be jealous and upset. Time for you to ride the struggle bus, Colin. I hope he's jealous. I hope he's crying, screaming, passing out. And not like a soft cry. I want a then I defy you stars cry, circa 1996. I defy you, stars! Circling back to Kate and Anthony, I only have a couple of other things I wanted to point out for the time being. One, the score that's playing is a regular Bridgerton score as opposed to an orchestral cover of a contemporary pop song, as has often been the case throughout Bridgerton. We've had covers like Robin's Dancing on My Own, as well as, what was that other one? Wrecking Ball. <laughs> I don't have a strong opinion about it being a score as opposed to a cover for this dance, especially when it's only a short clip and we don't have the full season to look through to see which covers have been included and when. I did a poll a while back about which covers you'd like to see on the show. I wasn't explicitly saying it had to be for this season. It was deliberately left open for interpretation, but the songs I specifically listed in that poll were all ones from Baz Luhrmann films because I love Baz Luhrmann's artistry and the way music is so deeply woven into the fabric of his world building and storytelling. Baz Luhrmann is the epitome of storytelling for the girls. Well, thank you so much for your time, Harold. This was a real fangirl moment for me and I had a great time, so I will not be wishing a plague on your house today. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> a plague on both your houses! I'm interested to see though, which songs they will be using for season three, but also that's not really ever the top of the list of the details of what I most want to see or learn or experience from the show. The songs on average tend to be a bit not as aligned with what I would want to be pleasantly surprised to hear was included. I have a habit of getting fixated on Y2K bops, early to mid 2000s bops, even better if it's a girl group and or even better if it's something urban. Can we just imagine how iconic it would be if Penelope was getting her flirt on with Lord Debling and he was making her laugh or maybe he's telling her that she looks nice or whatever would be considered appropriate in a courting situation for a Regency AU and then we hear it. Strings fading in with the melody of Obsessed by Mariah Carey or I'm Good by Black, I would get out of my chair and start yelling. Why are you so obsessed with me? Boy, I wanna know. But I'm not holding my breath for that. The show's soundtrack choices tend to be a bit. This is a white. Finally, 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 finally. We get Anthony stealing a kiss from his wife in public where people can see them. 
They're so cute, I'm going to start yelling. You gotta put your fingers in the holes. Remember that they live in stuffy, no fun, upper class society. You have to be prim and proper and never ever look like you're having too much fun in public. Imagine acting like you like your wife. Can you imagine? Society would be shocked. You need to be as stuffy and miserable as possible until your wife sneaks off to party with the Irish in the third class. So now if you'll excuse me, they're playing my jam. James Cameron, please adopt me. I would like to be adopted by a father who is a romance girly that likes to get into fist fights with sexists. I wasn't kidding when I say we're going to talk about James Cameron at some point. I keep reminding you because that will be happening this year. I don't know exactly when because Bridgerton season three has been keeping me plenty busy, but James Cameron is a romance girly and it's really important that all of you understand that. Your heartbeat is fast. Sorry. Try to focus. It's not just the fact that Anthony kissed his wife at a ball, it's the fact that her reaction is so ridiculously cute that it makes me want to snuggle a kitten. I've loved you from the moment we raced each other in that park. I've loved you at every dance, on every walk, every time we've been together and every time we've been apart, you don't have to accept it, you don't have to embrace it or even allow it. She looks surprised at his behavior, since it's not really following the general social behavior and norms of how people act at these balls, but also the fact that she's so delighted. She's not mad, she's having the time of her life because she's living her best life. No worries, just vibes, just a husband that is obsessed with loving her to bits exactly as she deserves. Can they please just be cute and happy for at least 95% mm, of their screen time? I don't mind leaving that small window for bickering because they're very good at it, but I just want the bickering to be low stakes bickering. They already went through it in season two, so can we let them enjoy the honeymoon bliss? Or maybe if they're going to have some serious emotional dramatic situation, maybe it could be where they're unpacking new layers of themselves or where they're helping other characters to work through their baggage or maybe a bit of both. We know that Jonathan and Simone can do whatever is thrown at them on this show, so I'm keeping an open mind. I'm not trying to be too specific in my demands. As long as I don't have to hear about those awful minds, then I won't have to arm myself. These were some admittedly rushed thoughts, but hopefully you got something out of them. At this rate, I don't think Netflix values what I do on here to the extent of wanting to include me on any press junket stuff. But at this rate, I would just be happy to get some screeners so that I can start prepping videos. I'm just going to assume the worst case scenario so that if anything unexpectedly works out in my favor, then I will be pleasantly surprised. Either way, I will continue to make videos about this show. We're going to talk about everything in depth. So stick around because I'm not even close to being finished. Thank you for all the likes, comments, and shares. Remember that when we hit 30K subscribers on here, Kimiko will be getting a new shirt and you will all get to see it. See you in the next one, which will most likely be a video about a rom-com that I was already editing, but then this clip was released and I had to talk about it first. Thank you to my patrons and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.